So here we are on the precipice of all these AI tools coming into market. We've got other industries that have already actually been able to adopt AI and digitize tools really easily. What about planning and scheduling for construction engineering? What's going on with us? Why can't we get on that bandwagon right away? Like, why isn't it here right now for us? I've been thinking about these challenges a lot as someone who wants to help planners and schedulers. And actually, I'm not the only one. That's crazy. Construction represents 10% of world GDP. I think the last number I looked at was 16 trillion a year. And um, we don't have a standard way to communicate information in our field. That is my good friend, Rene Marcos. He's the founder and CEO of a company called Alice Technologies. He's one of the smartest guys I've ever met in the scheduling profession. I like to joke that I've read every publication to do with construction scheduling in the world. Uh, I've probably read about 3,000 of them at this point. So it's not a joke? Yeah, I guess not. <laughs> uh, sad but true. How much do you think we need like better standardization in this industry to put algorithms on things? We don't have a standardized conceptual model in our industry. So there isn't a standard language in which to communicate construction information. And it, definitely not in, in computer terms, right? Well, it's true. We're lacking some standardization in construction scheduling, in scheduling in general. Our schedules are unique. Because we have a lot of flexibility in how we build our schedules, in terms of the level of detail, in terms of whether they're cost-loaded or resource-loaded, the different calendars, all these things that we take advantage of, we're lacking some standardization. What, what's the level, like take, you said? Take something, take something like scheduling and estimating, the two pillars of our industry. Somebody creates a schedule, somebody creates an estimate. Here's a question to you, are those two linked? Usually they're not. No, no. I've rarely seen it. Yeah, it's they a problem schedule. for schedulers. They don't know how to like, right. resolve it's, it's, them. It was created with a different level of detail, with a different sort of uh, yeah. uh, abstraction level, like one has 6,000 items and, and one has 10,000 items, or vice versa. These things are all done by separate people in different data schemas at different levels of detail. That's sort of a major issue. Yeah. What I like to think about is like, what is AI going to eat? What is it eating next? And, you know, in the 50s, it used to do things like tic-tac-toe, right? Yeah. I think it was in the 90s, we, we got to chess, right? In the 70s, it ate up the finance industry, right? But, but really, how hard is it to digitize numbers and accounts? What started happening lately is it started to eat up like natural language processing, image recognition, right? Yeah. Uh, it's starting to do more and more human tasks. But construction is one of the least digitized industries in the world precisely because we're one of the hardest to digitize. Um, we build custom products outside of factories, right? Uh, on site. Uh, and if you look at the average, you know, I mean, if you're building a $350 million project like, you know, an oil refinery that I was on in Abu Dhabi, you're looking at 2 million documents. You know, the, the, that, the amount of information, the scale of information is huge. It's true. We just have too much information in construction projects. And we don't know how to handle it. We don't know how to digitize it. We don't know how to integrate it, right? If you've been building parking lots for 20 years, you should literally be able to say, hey, here, literally, this is my database of how to build parking lots. And, and, and I know companies that have been doing like hospitals or schools or parking lots or whatever. There's some buildings that you can really just kind of bet the company on and just do that. And I've talked to them. Even then, you'd be surprised like, oh, yeah, we, we like we, we've, we have we have our we have documents to do with these last 20 years. But but is it in some format that's like standardized? Maybe some parts of it, but it it is not done. Like, I don't think I've ever seen a company go back and give you the actual production rates for something that they've built. Right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's also hard to f pull that data out of a project to your production rates, unless you're properly tracking it. Again, you're coming to the, the, the issue of there isn't a standardized conceptual model. There isn't a standard format in which the stuff gets stored. So I went to school for computer science a long, long time ago. And one of the things that you learn in computer science is something called object-oriented programming. What you do is you write a little bit of code and you reuse that code over and over and over and over. You can call it, so you don't have to write it so many times. This is something that we need to see in schedules, recursive or repeatable parts of schedules that we could use as building blocks, and then we could even reuse them 
across different projects. We need some sort of standardization in our industry to help us be able to move into this digitized world. And we're going to have to sift through and figure it out as we go. What I always envisioned was that we, like other industries, either need to or are going to go through this. Like it's one way or the other. Every other industry has gone through this digitization sort of um, revolution. And we are going through it right now. And I hope that this is an exciting place to be here on the precipice of this digitization revolution. Hopefully we get it right. Hopefully we're moving in the right direction. And I hope our jobs get easier sooner. Thoughts to think about. I'd love to hear your comments on what you think about standardization, digitization, AI tools. Leave me a comment. All for now, Michael out.